The owner of the mill drove his loader into the burning fire because it was too beautiful to let it burn. He was going to die for his wood. We saw three crocodiles. I want to thank you for sharing your talent with us. Oh, he's going to open a cabinet. When they open the cabinet, that means I'm privileged. OMG. Hi, it's Kimberly Lee with Vision Quest Sound, and I'm here at NAM in Anaheim, California with the best of the best of the best. Richard and Brian Hearn, Hearn, Hearn Hardwoods, Hardwoods Hearn Inc. Hardwoods. What we basically do is search out the world for the most beautiful exotic woods. So we travel, uh, I think I did 120,000 airlines last year. We were down in Belize pulling logs out of the rivers. We were in Africa sourcing ebony. We were in Madagascar. You are hands-on. You go find the wood and you bring it to us and you make incredible instruments. We saw three crocodiles, you know, so you're in there getting logs out of rivers where there's crocodiles in the water. Why is wood and trees and nature and environment so important to you? How did that get started? Years ago, I uh, was a leather craftsman and I was making guitar straps and exhibiting in Anam. But I was also traveling the art and craft show world and uh, a lot of my friends were woodworkers. I was playing in a country and western band with a logger and he used to let me go behind him and cut firewood to heat my studio. I would love to see a picture of you in that band. Yeah, yeah, Sorry, yeah. I just went yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, anytime uh, I went into the woods, he would often leave really cool, unusual pieces of wood, and I would work them into the back of an old pickup truck and take them to a sawmill. He would walk away from some really cool pieces because they were more artistic and they didn't really have any commodity value. And what inspired you to create musical instruments, being a musician, I'm assuming? Okay, well, we don't actually do the musical instruments. We sell the wood to the people who do. Oh, gotcha. Uh, but I did play guitar, and why most people start uh, doing this sort of thing is because they can't afford the one they want, so they build it. Well, that's a good segue. So speaking of price points, what does what is, what is your wood cost um, on average, and how can people know more about your company? Well, we have a pretty good web presence. It's hernhardwoods.com, and uh, we handle somewhere between 150 and 200 species. Some of them are... Uh, fairly accessible some are very rare there's a piece of oh yeah let's see i was about right to say australia so let's get it. and this piece of wood is probably worth somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars wow very rare and so i understand this is your son brian so brian can i have a question for you sure. How, did you just break into the business because dad's involved or do you have a personal connection as well with wood uh, well, I, I grew up with it. I mean, when he, he got into the wood business, um, you know, I was just four or five years old. So I've been around it my entire life. And, and you know the guy that runs the business. I'd like to actually see some more uh, examples. Are these examples of the wood? Sure, so sure, can, sure. We, uh, okay. can we chime in and tell me a little bit about what we're seeing here? Well, we'll just grab the very first one. This is Koa from Hawaii. Uh, it's a very rare, rare wood, grows on... Uh, only grows well on one island from three to 6,000 feet in elevation. Which island? The Big Island. There are two very active volcanoes on that island, so every time we buy it, I'm afraid that it might be the last time we can find it. 90% uh, of what's growing there is protected. So you have to, the only stuff that is still available is in the agriculture zoning. The problem with that is cows love the leaves. So they so what them. happens? Right, right. <laughs> so let's see another guitar made out of uh, the wood that you... Oh, this one. I like this one. This is a Weisenborn made by Scott Walker, who exhibits here. Uh, this is a traditional Hawaiian instrument played with a slide. Uh, Scott makes beautiful instruments. Uh, we actually had some people demonstrating these earlier. There's a pedal steel made out of koa. Oh, Alan, come on over here. I just, I, you know, I'm at a NAM music show. I would think I was going to hear some music. What are you going to do for us? Uh, this is something Buddy Emmons made up called Blue Jade.
How does it feel to be playing this? This is a great guitar. It's um, the man that built this. His dad pretty much almost invented the pedal steel, Shot Jackson. And um, this is like the culmination of his career. He's like in his mid 70s right now. So the undercarriage is like just the, the peak of his engineering and inventiveness. I want to thank you for sharing your talent with us, and I want to thank Brian and Richard. Oh, ooh, he's going to open the he's going to open a cabinet. Hold on, when they open the cabinet, that means I'm privileged. O M G. Hold on. Now, what is this, Richard? This is a baritone guitar, which is tuned in the same register as a cello. It's made out of European spruce, but the backside is Guatemalan rosewood, and this particular log is a figured one which has these beautiful three-dimensional lines in it. We were sawing it one day and the, that night uh, the sawmill burned down. The owner of the mill drove his loader, which is his most valuable possession, into the burning fire to pull this log out because it was too beautiful to let it burn. So he was going to die for his wood. So I'm calling this guitar the Phoenix and it's uh, made by Froggy Bottom Guitars in Vermont. But what had me is when you said it's like a cello. Is that to mean it sounds like a cello? It's played in the same register. Thank you so much for your time and attention. Awesome. Richard, Brian, Allen, we love you. Nam 2020. I'll be back after this tequila break. <laughs>